Hi everyone, welcome to the Fullest Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki Bostwick, and I'm so excited today to have Serena Mitnick Miller on. She's a mother, an artist, a designer, and owner of The General Store, which is truly, truly my absolutely favorite store I've ever experienced going into. I've been a huge fan for so long. You've inspired me through just so much in my own life and I'm just really just honored to have you on the show. Serena, thank you for coming on today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I first walked in. I don't know when you first started General Sort, so I'm excited to get into hearing a little bit about your journey. I first walked in to the Venice store probably like, was it six years ago? How long have you been open? Um, the Venice store has now been open for over 10 years. Wow. And then we first started in San Francisco about 13 or 14, 13 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Such yeah. a long time ago and just still going strong and shaping so much of California modernism, I guess, is maybe the way to put it. I don't really know what you call it, so I'm curious what you would describe as the aesthetic or vibe that you're going for. But I'd love to hear about just your journey, starting General Store, and what inspired you to start it. It, it was kind of something that happened really fast. Um, I had graduated college with an art degree, wasn't really sure what to do with my life. I was working at a surf shop at the time and through that had kind of learned how to run a store. I was also kind of uh, becoming an artist per se, like a working artist. Like I had had like a show and had some work and had some momentum um, and needed a studio and studio space was in the neighborhood that I lived in, in the outer sunset in San Francisco was hard to find. And there was a storefront available, but it was like a little bit too expensive. And so me and my partner at the time were just like, well, maybe we can just sell some stuff in the front and then I could have my studio in the back and then it would help kind of cover the rent. Turns out that's like a really bad plan as an artist because (laughs) then you never have any free time to make work because people can just come into your studio all the time. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But the store part took off and at the time it was more just like looking around at what everybody else or what like looking like creating something that was missing in you know the community there specifically because that's where we were living but you know I also you know traveled a lot and had been to a lot of places always love seeking out like interesting spaces and things and experiences and so it was just kind of like a natural progression to kind of create something that was like home to share with others. We named it General Store so that we could kind of do whatever we wanted within the space. And it was kind of, it kind of didn't have to go in a certain direction because we didn't, I mean, honestly, we opened the store in like a month or two. Like it was a really like fast experience. And then, and then from there, you know, it's evolved over the years. And I think like taken on a life of its own and, you know, the aesthetics have changed over time a bit, um, maybe have become more refined, but it's it's more just kind of what is available at the time. You know, when I first opened the store, nobody was making ceramics. Like, I loved ceramics, but you couldn't, you know, like I could find vintage ceramics, but, you know, and now 10, 12 years later, they're everywhere. It's like, you can't walk down the street without stumbling upon somebody who's a ceramicist. And that's just like one aspect of the store. And so that's just kind of, if you think about that and like the, you know, I just remember like what I had to choose from when we first opened versus what I have to choose from now is so different. I am curious how, as you've, you know, you were sharing how the aesthetic has changed a little bit and become more refined. Do you think that as you go through, as you became a mother and as you've gotten older, has that inspired different products or different things that you've brought into the store? I think so. Yeah. I think that, you know, part of it is it's a, it's a fine balance between what sells. (laughs) Yeah. 
important. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, the reason why we're still around is because like it actually has to function as a business as opposed to just like choosing all the, because a lot of stuff I like other people aren't interested in. Mm -hmm. And so there's a fine balance between what sells and then what is, you know, the things that really interest me. And, you know, I'll still buy a few of the things that are either like less attainable or just like kind of more out there. But I think that, you know, as far as like kids stuff goes, like, it doesn't sell great. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. little toys and little things that for gifts for babies sells fine. But like kids clothes, nobody really wants to like, buy high end kids clothes, like, you know, or it's not like a huge like money maker. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I've watched people like create businesses around different things. And it's like, everybody has their passion. And I think that like, if you do something really specifically, really well, the people will come and get it. But I think overall, people are like looking for a very specific gift thing, mm -hmm. you know, when they come to the store. So I don't know if that it's kind of a tangent, but no, yeah, it makes sense. So obviously becoming a mother brought in the kid stuff, right? And it became, <laughs> yeah. and then, um, how how far into it how old are your kids so my son is six and my daughter is three and a half and I would say the kids came in midway yeah about yeah like right right smack dab in the middle of where I'm at now how was that transition for you of having first year business and then did you feel overwhelmed or how did you feel like it was like a good time I think a lot of women and a lot of people who listen are listening right now we have a lot of moms and or women who are interested in becoming moms maybe they just got married but they're not sure how to navigate that aspect of their career while becoming you know taking that leap into motherhood yeah I grew up with a single mom and I've always been very clear on like wanting to have kids like that was something I really wanted I wanted two kids I wanted a girl and a boy super grateful I got Aww. what I wanted and that's <laughs> like they're my greatest pride and joy but I also wanted stability and I wanted to have a career and like a home dialed in and all of these things before I had children because I didn't have as much stability when I was a kid and so that was really important to me. And I am super grateful that I was really well supported by my partner at the time and my other business partner. And I had the opportunity to take the time that I needed to have kids. And, you know, I'm not going to say it's easy, mm -hmm. even with that support. Um, and now that I'm a single mom co-parenting, like, it's even more complicated. And as they get older, there's you know, this year I got, I get to go to two different schools to drop off. Wow. And, you know, it's like, it's, I don't, I don't think that you ever feel settled in it because it's like an ever moving target. But I think that you just have to be like, or at least in my life, I've really prioritized them. And, but I set up my life so that I could do that. And it took, it took many years to get to that point. And, you know, I understand that not everybody has that ability to do that. But that, that was my drive. You know, I'm not to say that I'm doing it perfectly or anything. And I'm sure that like, stuff is going to come up. But yeah, it's definitely tricky. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, do you have a business partner in the store still? I do. But um, for the past um, year or so, uh, it's just been me doing it on my own because she has stepped away. So, so yeah, it's just me right now. How's that been going for you? Is it, yeah, I'm just curious going from having a business partner to having it be you, but having the business kind of be established already? I think that so much has changed in my life over the past couple of years, you know, from the pandemic to just like the business, like running the business itself seems much more complicated now. Um, and I don't think that has anything to do with, you know, partnership it just has to do with like the nature of kind of the world at the moment yeah just like the cost of doing business has gone up so much finding employees is so much harder yeah I don't 
so I think that most of my challenges are just coming from generally like the world factors, but I, I am just, I'm doing what I have to do. Do you, as I think a lot of, you know, obviously brick and mortar was closed for a while during the pandemic. Right. And so Mm -hmm. you paying rent, you don't have people coming in, but you have an online aspect to the company. Like, I'm so curious how that played into also just like your personal life transitioning, or that probably was a really hard time. And I've seen you in the store a few times, but, and, you know, we met at our last event because I'm so honored that our products are at your store. And it was such a big milestone for us because we're such big fans, but I also just really resonate and love your energy and you're so calm and it feels so nice to be around and connect with people that are calm and um, with you specifically with your energy, even just right now. So I'm curious how you manage your emotions and I'm always interested in how people manage the ups and downs in their life and during the pandemic having a store being closed and also, you know, just what everyone was going through at home, being home with their family and not knowing what's going to happen or whatever. I'm just curious how you navigated that and what you looked to for support, whether that's products or people, a community, was it, what was it? What sorts of things helped you through that time period? I would say that it's, you know, a variety of things. Home is the most important thing to me. And it was funny when the pandemic first hit and everything was still fine. And, you know, we weren't, I was like, oh, it's just going to be a couple weeks. Like, I was kind of excited about it because it just like all of a sudden got rid of all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And, and it was just like, oh, cool. We can just like kind of be at home and, you know, and then everything fell apart. And I would say the past, what has it been, two and a half years, have been the hardest years of my life. And it's funny because everybody has this experience of me of being so calm, but on the inside, <laughs> it's, it's very chaotic, I promise you. It's not. I started doing therapy after my separation, and it's now been two years. Um, that's a huge part of my life. I try to meditate daily. It's trickier when I have the kids, but I definitely do it when I don't. And that's probably actually harder for me than even therapy, just like staying still. I am the kind of person who like when something big happens, which there's been a lot of different big things that have happened, I figure out, I just, I'm like, okay, what can we do to fix this? Like, I'm just like very proactive. I do freak out. I'm an overthinker. And so sometimes that is good and can help me make good decisions, but other times it can be hard. Um, And so managing that has been huge. And I love to take a bath every day. Oh, that's so nice. It's like, it's kind of like washing off the day at the end of the day before I get into bed. And And then hiking and surfing and playing with my kids and just super grateful to live where I live and spend a lot of time outside. And I try to be really grounded. Um, Where did you grow up? um, So I was born on the East Coast in Western Mass. And then when I was in like the third grade, I think, we moved to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Um, The North Shore or? Yeah, on Kauai. Um, And then... I lived there until I graduated high school and then uh, moved back to the East Coast for a couple of years and then moved to California and I've lived here ever since. Would you say that it's your upbringing or living in Kauai that I guess what I'm trying to say is when you go into your store, it's just so natural and it, it's really grounded. Like you were saying, you try and stay grounded. And I'm curious if it's your time on Kauai or what aspect of your upbringing or what part of it is like really inspiring that aspect of general store. I think it's probably a combination. Both my parents are artists, um, but I mostly grew up with my mom and she has this love for the natural world that like transcends, you know, the normal 
a normal but you know like she cries and hugs trees when she's in the you know the redwoods and those you know just this like beautiful connection to nature and I think and it's been that way since I would like can remember and I probably took it for granted for a really long time but I think that I in a way have have that and so when I'm looking to be surrounded by things in my my own life and the store is just an extension of my life you know I'm always looking for natural materials and that I guess that's kind of like how it translates yeah because I I mean I never I mean I always I love nature as well I just love natural materials and I'm a huge fan of that as well but I'd never gone into a store that kind of brought all of that together until I went into your store and that inspired so many other stores to kind of open like yours or use that as inspiration for their, you know, online or whatever. You you completely opened up this aesthetic. I feel like that wasn't reflected before. And I think a lot of times, I think it's just a, a classic aesthetic and feeling, I feel like even the word aesthetic isn't really right because it's just this feeling that you get when you walk in, even when you go online, it just feels so grounded and it feels so good. So when you reached out, when you guys reached out to carry our products, um, we were just so, so happy because we, I shop at your store and I just love being in there. And I think that there aren't that many spaces where you can say, you just want to go in. Um, I live in Orange County. So when I go up to LA, it's like, I don't want to leave Venice. I used to live in Venice though. Um, I never wanted to leave without just popping in just to get that feeling because it just felt so nice. And I'm curious how, I guess you found, I know it's an extension of your personal life, but I'm curious how you found our products and some of the other ones that you've chosen. Like you said, some are, you know, to make sure that the bottom line looks good, but a lot of them are also just, just there to like support, I guess, that feeling, that vibe, that whatever it is that you want to, I mean, that's an art in and of itself to have people come into your space and leave with this sense of like calm as if they were able to like meditate, right? Because that meditation can be a walking meditation. It could be something, an active meditation. And for me, I feel like I have that same feeling when I come into your space. And I've never really felt that before anywhere else other than like a yoga studio or something like that, right? I think that is a huge part of my grounding is like creating like my home probably feels the same way. I mean, that's the way it feels to me is like creating this space that like I feel comforted and warm, like warm and grounded. And, you know, a lot of people ask me like, oh, like, don't you like desire to have color around you and all these different things. And I think that like, Maybe it's because there's so much going on inside my head or, you know, like I just am like just constantly thinking all the time that I'm just, I yearn to have this like peaceful surrounding around me in order to kind of like ground myself and feel, you know, the way that you experience me (laughs) at peace. Um, (laughs) I don't know like how I choose products. I'm always you know, it's like my eyes are always open. Um, I'm always looking for like something new and exciting. Um, I love to go into, you know, places, but obviously like the internet has, you know, made this much easier. Um, How I came about your product was, you know, somebody was talking to me about the warming effects of saffron and I just kind of was looking around for like different ways to purchase it and use it and yours came up and then like obviously was drawn immediately to like the the beautiful just like packaging and like it as an object but then once I tried it and I was just like oh this is amazing um and I was like we have to sell this so you know everything that we have in the store is like pretty much something that like I believe in and use and or you know 
somebody that works for us. And yeah, you know, from candles to clothing to books, it's all things that like I am just, you know, incredibly inspired by and yeah. Hi everyone, welcome again to the Fullest Podcast. As you may or may not know, we've been sharing the benefits of saffron with our community for a little while now, and I want to offer 15% off our entire product line to our podcast listeners with code the fullest podcast at checkout online at thefullest.com. Growing up in a Persian family, I'd always felt the benefit of saffron in my life, but it wasn't until I stumbled on the research that it made me realize what powerful medicine it is. Saffron has been proven over and over again in clinical double-blind placebo trials to be an effective form of treatment for depression, anxiety, and ADHD. Saffron has been used by many cultures for thousands of years for these purposes, and now the research is here to finally back it up, proving that plant medicines and ancient healing practices can actually be an effective alternative to pharmaceuticals. At the fullest, we believe that incorporating this ancient wisdom into our modern lives is the most powerful and accessible path to healing. We also believe that everyone's journey is unique, so our product line offers a variety of formulas to help you curate saffron into your personal wellness routine. Warm Feelings is our saffron latte powder and comes in individual sachets and in large sustainable glass jars. Featuring 150 milligrams of high-grade saffron in a creamy bed of coconut and cardamom, it's the perfect coffee alternative and feel-good start to your day. If you prefer to pop a pill, Kinder Thoughts is our 30-day supply of saffron capsules, and it's a super simple way to support your body and mood with the power of saffron. Not to mention, it's really amazing for headaches if you feel one coming on. Our saffron soaks are the latest addition to our product lineup, which include Exheal, our saffron salt bath blend, and Inheal, our probiotic-rich saffron milk bath blend. Soak in them to support your digestion, inflammation, and support your skin microbiome. Honestly, at the moment, I'm using each of these products on a daily basis depending on my needs. And to help you begin your saffron journey, we're offering a discount of 15% off just for our podcast listeners with code THEFULLESTPODCAST at checkout. I hope you enjoy your new daily saffron ritual. I have been having this conversation a lot lately about just as an individual, as a partner, or just as a family member, whatever that might be, that people have this sort of, because not a lot of people take the time to do this, but some people do, and I'm assuming you have, but to really set an intention for your life and what you want to accomplish, right? So in business, it's really easy. It's like you have this mission statement and you kind of go off of that mission statement of, you know, might be like, this is the feeling that we want people to have, or this is our goal is to share this experience, whatever this experience is with people. And for me specifically, like I have an idea of what I want to co-create or be part of in my personal life and my partnership um, as a family in my business. And so I'm just kind of curious what yours is. Like, what are you inspired by? Like, what do you want to leave people with? I mean, I think that on a personal level, it was all like, you know, it's all like family driven, like creating a home that, you know, was stable and grounding and just like peaceful. And I think that like business wise, you know, it's to inspire people to care about how they live. I don't know if it was the intention in the beginning. It was more just like, because it wasn't very thought out. It was just like, hey, let's sell some things that we believe in. And over time, we had to kind of start explaining more and more like what we were doing as like a collective and as a, you know, and now I think that I'm trying to figure out like what the next stage in my life is and like figuring out like what my next but I think that I always want to live with intention and I always want to care about the things that I'm like surrounded with. And, you know, it's like, I love picking up a coffee cup and like knowing the person that made it. And like, that's, and like, not everybody gets to have that experience, but at least I can share with them like, 
hey, here, you can come buy this coffee cup that was made by one of my friends and enjoy it and experience it. And like, it can bring joy to your life every day. And I think that living with natural materials is like, it can, you know, it's important from like the underwear level to the, how you paint your walls or how you, um, like the color can affect you. There's like, like how much light you let into your house versus, you know, it's like, and everybody's experience is so different. And, you know, I'm trying to be better about like understanding other people's experiences of, you know, the (laughs) same things that I experienced my own way. Um, But I think that if I can at least inspire people with the, what I've chosen, like then, you know, that's, I've done my job, I guess. Yeah. Even just like the way that you've created this space so intentionally with letting light in and having plants and uh, like natural objects in there inspires people to let that into their own life. So I, I mean, I've shared this a million times, obviously already, but you definitely executed that vision for sure. <laughs> On a personal level, I I think it's really so amazing. Your commitment to your family, you've said that over and over again, and having a stable home and, and knowing and sharing, I guess, that you can have a stable home with parents who are separated, right? You can have a stable home being a single mother or a single dad, right? I think that it's interesting because you're in a stage in your life or, and we're all getting to this place as a generation where this is the time where people separate or, you know, that's part and not that it, not that that's going to happen to everyone, but if it is going to happen, it starts to happen during this time in our lives. And it's like a really interesting time. Like you mentioned to navigate, taking care of your children and having a business and, taking them to school and two different schools. And then now you running your company on your own and you have two stores and you have this online business and it's the pandemic after the pandemic and like what the economy looks like right now. It's so much to navigate and to still have that personal inspiration and personal need for stability in the home and create and knowing that you can create that. I think a lot of times, and you know, I'm sharing this because as a platform, we're a wellness, holistic wellness platform. And I think, and right now in Iran, I'm Iranian. So right now in Iran, there's like a revolution happening or women that are trying to have a revolution happen. And I was having this conversation with my brother-in-law where it's like, how do you find happiness? Like happiness, how do you find and work on like happiness truly coming from within when like the outside world is so chaotic. And I think a lot of times people are like, I'm going to be happy when this happens, or I'm going to be happy during these circumstances when the Ayatollah is gone or when this, but it's obviously, I don't know what it's like to drive a revolution, right? Like my parents have been a part of, you know, in and out of this war and experienced it forever. But I was just saying, you know, it's like, it's so interesting to find how happiness and grief can be experienced at the same time or stability Mm -hmm. and instability. It's so interesting how it can be intertwined and how you can have this experience of being grounded amidst so much chaos. And that's an art of its own right? To experience and to try and navigate through that is an art of its own. And it's so interesting. And I love having conversations like that with people because it's so raw and real instead of just kind of certain, I interview lots of people. So certain topics are just like, you want to be optimistic about, like, I just interviewed someone about climate change and how they're changing, you know, kiss the ground. (laughs) And it's like, it's so inspiring because you really need to like, hopefully get donations for it and continue the movement but it internally it's like that topic of climate change is just so hard to tackle day in and day out right and then being a single mom and running a business and doing all this it's so there's so much going on whether you're a single mom or not or whether you're a business owner or not there's so much just going on in the world and so I just love having conversations like this and I appreciate you being so open and vulnerable and sharing with us your process because 
you stand for so much and people look up, not only do people look up to you in the community, but brands like what you curate in your store, huge brands go on to like find, right? What you've mm -hmm. chosen and then go on to, and that grows the smaller brands that you found from the beginning of their lifetime. And then they go on to, you know, be and have the opportunity to be in these other stores. So it's really interesting how one person can impact so much. And I, I think it's really just exciting to have that experience of being so open and raw and grounded at the same time. And I know that it's like my experience of you of being peaceful and but just being able to share that you're not because everyone has their ups and downs and everyone just has different circumstances that they go through. And I think a lot of times people forget that in the world of like social media, there's so much comparison, so much like, you know, maybe Serena, Serena's so lucky. She has these stores and she's this, what is your, your bio says Doyen. Doyen. And I love that <laughs> word. By the way, I looked it up and I was like, wow, so amazing. It's, the perfect word for you. But then, you know, just to see how someone you look up to or someone who can have so much influence, like go through a lot is it's just makes it so much more real. As you go on to kind of shape how you want this next stage of your life to look, I guess, what is like your hope for others in their process? Because I think your personal process somehow has become something that other people look to and like offers others to reflect on their own process? Um, oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> I would, I mean, I think that to kind of like go back to some of the stuff you were saying earlier on, I, you know, one of my biggest struggles is being very black and white and I have a hard time existing in the gray area. And so kind of like figuring out how to, balance that a little bit more balance is a huge part of my life I'm a Libra so I'm like a <laughs> I'm like five planet Libra um and so I'm always like trying to figure those things out but I think that in the past I have gone to super extremes about like certain things and so I'm trying to be more mindful of who I really am but then also keep some of my life personal because I was very open with my life for a really long time and I shared a lot and um I you know totally got heartbroken and it's real and but it's also it's it's humbling in this way the same way kind of having a business is humbling during this whole process and I feel like my whole life is going through this reckoning of like what who am I really and what do I really want to do with my life I didn't create general store by myself I had a partner and then other partners and I have an incredible team of people who have worked for me. Some people who worked for me for a long time, other people who were, who were here for a short time who made a big impact. And I'm not going to pretend that I do any of this by myself. And I'm so grateful to all those people and the community of people who make things for the store. I have the ability to watch these small companies come in and I get really excited about them. And then they, they grow bigger than me. Um, the nature of, or, or not me, but general store. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and the nature of the business is that, you know, if I want to keep it interesting and the way that it was intended, it doesn't, it's not really scalable. And I'm grappling with that a lot these days of like, okay, so how do I, how do I sustain my life on my own now? And how do I put my kids through college and how do I like, you know, buy them all the things that they want and like, you know, live my life and also do all the things that I want to do. And like, I, I'm also an artist and I, I still like want to pretend to, <laughs> that I want to like pursue that as well. And I'm realizing that time is super limited and like choosing Choosing how you spend your time is so important and prioritizing. And so, yeah, so I, I have no idea what the future holds. And I don't, I don't pretend to be an expert on anything. And I live my life very intuitively. And sometimes it backfires. But I'm just getting back up and I'm just going to keep going and see, see what's next. 
and I still have hope for the future. You know, if I don't think in ex black and whites about climate change and, you know, if I think positively about the revolution in Iran and, you know, there are beautiful, inspiring moments coming from that, but there's also some really devastating stuff happening out there. And some days I cry, some days I laugh. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting because it's this idea of like glorifying these situations. You know, I think like the revolution in Iran, so inspiring what these women are doing, but and the reality of it is so much. You know, it's like we, we get to see these beautiful images of these girls letting out their hair, but I think that it's really, really hard. Yeah, and they're getting, you know, just the gunfire, the like what's really yeah. happening on the, it's just and that's with everything too. We glorify so much and so mm -hmm. so important to have these conversations around like how do we actually how do we navigate being in those gray areas that are so you know, right? It's so interesting yeah. to just navigate that time and share that, you know, it's, it's about being optimistic, but put really putting your head down and not letting the worry and the because and the anxiety get to you in such a way that it paralyzes you. Because that's yeah. kind of what you're sharing is it's really about taking it one step at a time and seeing how it unfolds and really reconnecting with your intuition. And that's really what I believe in too is um, empowering people to reconnect with their intuition. Because actually, I um, recently interviewed Zach Bush on a podcast, and he was saying, we're designed to break each other down every single day and to break that relationship with our intuition every day by doing that to other people and them doing that to us, right? So just having that intention of following your intuition and knowing it's not always going to be, you know, the best way, but that it's the way that is the most authentic um, mm -hmm. and probably the most fulfilling when something is authentic is really um, so important to share because then that's a way to navigate those times. That's how I've navigated it as well because there's so much noise out there and it's hard to be human a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's nice to have moments where you can take a bath and wash, like you said, wash away the day or, you know, have tea or, you know, our latte obviously is something that I go to or just a moment mm -hmm. um, with your kids. And that's what's really cool about kids is they live in the present and help you come back to that. So nice, but sometimes yeah. so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so interesting because sometimes my, you know, not sometimes, all the time, my kids like break down and cry and throw fits and all of these things. And like, you know, depending on my state, sometimes I react. But the thing that I'm trying to do the most is just be like, they are having an emotion because they don't know how to communicate how they're feeling. And so they're having this moment of frustration and it's coming out as this and so then I just have to like regroup and be like, okay, like I just need, they just need a hug. They just need to be like, feel seen and feel heard and feel understood. And, you know, I, and you see people out in the world, like getting frustrated, like with their kids and like, I'm totally guilty of it. And it's like, when you're outside of it, it's, it's so hard to watch, but when you're in it, you're just like, you're inputting all of your shit on them yeah and so it's like I'm my you know it's like the 2.0 me is being like okay what's mine and what's theirs and how can I and you know and that goes for like every interaction that I have and like I've made a lot of mistakes in my life but like how you can live now is like it starts now it's like every day it's like a new start of like okay what can I do now in this moment to like stay on my side of the street and own my shit and like not put it on to somebody else? Probably the biggest challenge, but that having children has created that mirror for me that like is so 
much more obvious and such an incredible challenge, but also such an incredible experience to just be able to like have those moments. Because when, when I am just able to drop right in and just give them a hug and not react, it's like probably one of the most rewarding things. I know when you realize like you were able to do really what you wanted and intended to do. It's the best. Totally. Feeling. Yeah. <laughs> when you aren't able to, you're like, oh, I know I could have done better, but yeah, yeah you're just like, I failed. <laughs> but it's like, you just have to get back up and try again. Yeah. And just like they have to with walking or with whatever, you know, it's like totally. stubbing their toe or like, you know, whatever the thing the like, you know, mini meltdown is of the moment if there's, yeah, there's always victory on the other side some way or another. So, yeah. Um, well, thank you for joining us today. I'm so grateful you were able to take some time to do this. I know you're really busy and and then we had some technical challenges, but we got through it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Serena.